welcome to Brew TV, your one and only beer and brewing TV show located right here in Perth. Every week we'll be exploring the world of beer and brewing in Western Australia, from the home brewer to the professional breweries and everything else in between. And for you cider drinkers and ginger beer lovers, we'll also include you as well. G'day, welcome to Brew TV, episode number two. We're down here at the wonderful Swan River at the old brewery, having a great time. We've got some great stuff in store for you. And thanks very much for your feedback from last week. Much appreciated. To kick off the show tonight, we're gonna to revisit Marlon. His brew's ready, it's time to bottle, and we're heading off there now. It's been oh, two weeks since we put your brew on. It's all ready for bottling. So now the fun part is cleaning the bottles. So when it comes to washing your bottles, there's a few things that we need to do. Obviously they've got to be super clean because if you've got any speck of dirt inside that bottle, you're going to have a source of potential infection. So that source of potential infection can lead to bottles exploding. And you may have uh, recall the story of Alan talking about exploding bottles. A few things that can happen there, um, you know, infection uh, or it hasn't finished fermenting. The way we can tell whether this hasn't been fermenting is we'll take another hydrometer reading, which we'll do in a moment, but we'll get on to the bottles. So, bottle, bottle brush, it's not hard. Just shove that right in there. Give it a good clean. Get some now, just take it easy pulling this out because you'll spray chemical and water all over the place. I give it a bit of a shake as well to the bottle. I always like to have a bit of a look if there's any muck in there, but no, nice and clean. And onto the bottle tree. Uh, nice and simple, you can buy this from any of your home brew stores. Uh, you'll see we've got some different bottles, which I'll talk about in a moment. But this little device here is just the bottle washer. After you've scrubbed it, it's best to give it a good rinse. Um, so we've got a little bit of no rinse sterilizer again. On it goes. Uh, that's just coating the inside of that bottle. And we put that to dry and just let that drain out and that's sterilized the bottle. So we've just taken our sample of beer, dropping in the hydrometer, and this will give us our final gravity. And we can do a little sum and work out our alcohol content. So that's at 1,010, which is where you want it for a kit and kilo. So, when it comes to home brewing and bottling your beer, how do you get the carbonation? How do you get the fizz into your beer? At the moment, in the fermenter, the beer is flat. There's no bubbles in it. So, we need to introduce carbon dioxide into this. Now, just as you saw the airlock bubbling away, that's the yeast converting the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide's escaping through the airlock. We can do what's called secondary fermentation or bottle conditioning. Now, in the old days, Gary used to use a sherbet spoon and measure out a nice dose of sugar. You can actually get sugar, you still can get sugar spoons. They're not quite sherbet spoons, but they're plastic measurers. And some people still use caster sugar. Some people might use malt. There is an easy way, carbonation drops. Two of these in a 750 ml bottle will give you just enough carbonation to give you that nice head and also that, that fizz to your beer. Absolutely fantastic. Nice and easy. Two in each bottle. 
And always do this before you put your beer in because you need a bit of a gap at the top to allow that carbon dioxide to fill it and take up that space so we don't get any explosions. So, on to the next bit. Okay, we've got our bottle filler, got our bottles with our two carbonation drops in. Slide this up. Now that valve at the bottom, you just depress into the bottom of the bottle. And you want to stop it when the beer is to the very top of the bottle. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you drop it out, the displacement gives you the airspace that you need for that carbon dioxide. Onto our Old Faithful. And those of you that are doing the stubbies, you've probably now realised that I've just filled the equivalent of four stubbies in about the same time it's taken to fill two stubbies. So you can see why we go for the bigger bottles. Nice and quick, nice and simple, 28 bottles, all done and dusted, nice and easy. And so it's time to cap. First of all, the crown seals. You can buy them in different colours, easier to colour code your beer, or you can just write on the top with a permanent marker, nice and easy. They're single use, as with most of the crown seals. This capper here, magnetic bell, pop the bottle underneath, spring loaded, get a nice seal. I just like to give it about a quarter of a turn. Give it a second for good measure. Take it out, away we go. Give it a bit of a shake up just to free those little carbonation drops off the bottom and they'll start dissolving and away you go. Marlon, we've got the flip top bottle there and the plastic bottle. Do you want to give those a bit of a, a, bit of a seal up for us? Nice and easy. Push it down, lock it in, give it a bit of a shake. There you go, you can hear them loosening up there. After about two days, I like to give all my bottles a secondary shake just to dilute that, that sugar through there. Gets the, the, the residual yeast breaking down that sugar and converting it into carbon dioxide. And the last one there is the plastic bottle. I'll just keep that lid. The plastic caps are exactly the same as your soft drink bottles. There, they've even got the security seal on there as well. We have just put these through a little bit of no rinse steriliser. The more sterile you can keep it, the better it is. Nice and tight, absolutely fantastic. I don't think that will be coming off in a hurry. Give it a good shake. The beauty of the plastic bottles is, of course, the, um, the carbonation drops don't stick for some reason. They don't stick as, as, as tight to the plastic as to the glass. So away you go. We've got another 25 bottles to bottle. So we'll see you very soon. Well, Marlon, there you go. Your first batch of home brewed. Welcome to the brew crew. Oh, thank you for having me, John. It's been a pleasure. No worries. We've got two cartons of beer here. Now, did you work out how much it cost? Um, yeah, I think just probably under $25. There you go. For less than $25, two cartons of full strength beer. In a couple of weeks time, that yeast will have broken down those carbonation drops to give us the right amount of fizz, and we'll have a bit of a taste test. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, John.
feel the urge, you feel the need to heighten the senses. You can uh, give the beer a swirl, have a sniff, and then um, let them flavours work on the palate. So, um, get your Angus Pale Ale there, mate. So, um, this is a American Pale Ale. Um, when I say American Pale Ale, the um, American craft beer scene, they're probably the world leaders, they're about 10, 15 years ahead of our scene. Um, and they've come up with a lot of new hop varieties which are quite big, bold and uh, quite pungent. So we've got Daniel and Kieran here. They're not really beer drinkers. In fact, we heard a little rumour that they are more into their bourbons and their whiskies. So we thought we'd drag them down here and get them into craft brews. 